Hey yo, and what is up gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. It's been an absolutely wild Wednesday once again, thanks to the WWE giving us a double shot of Wednesday action. We just finished covering the NXT UK episode number two, which was just an absolutely fun time to be had by all. We just finished wrapping up as well, filming for the subscription box showdown, but now we're getting down to the important stuff as the May Young Classic is coming to its conclusion with the finals being at WWE Crapolution, which nobody wants to see at all, with the exception of the finals of the May Young Classic. But tonight, the semifinals are about to wrap up. Four women remain. Two left to move on. Let's get this show started. My name is Nick Nightmare and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's live reaction show to the May Young Classics final episode, the semi-finals with the four best women in the world. Let's do it. <laughs> Wrestling fans, tonight's May Young Classic live review is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering a free 30-day trial and one free audiobook download to fans of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show just for trying out their service. Over 180,000 titles to choose from. All you have to do is go to audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer tv to sign up right now. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer tv for a free audiobook and 30-day free trial over at audible thank you guys once again for checking out the sledgehammer wrestling show on a wacky wild wednesday that has just got me absolutely exhausted but i have been looking forward to this episode of the may young classic all week long the semifinals last year was the best round of the inaugural may young classic and i expect that to happen again tonight two matches that we've got to get through so let's waste no more time and get to the action on the WWE Network. We are going to watch it together. Our first matchup is going to be Tony Storm taking on Mako Satomura. Two of the most impressive women I have seen over the last two years. Tony Storm has been absolutely killing it everywhere that she goes. The Mae Young Classic last year. NXT, NXT UK, anywhere she puts her mark, she is remembered. She is something you will not forget. Tony Storm has been great during this May Young Classic, but nothing has surprised me as much as the final boss of All Japan. That is Mako Satomura. She has just been next level. In every single matchup, she has overmatched, outmatched, outshined anybody that she has been put in the ring with. I have been thoroughly impressed with her, and there is there aren't even the enough words in the English language to convey to you guys just how impressed and just how taken back I was by all of the performances that Mako has given us. She's just been fantastic, and this match is going to probably be ridiculous. Tony Storm, in her second chance to finally get her hands on that Mae Young Classic trophy, has got the biggest challenge of her life standing in her way. This match is about to get started right now. Kayla Braxton in all her golden hippie glory. Look at the size of them hips. That's not a bad thing. Just saying. Call it like I see it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The semifinals were fantastic last year. If I didn't say it already. So this is going to be probably the best episode we've ever had between both May Young Classics.
What does tonight mean, Michael Cole says? <laughs> tonight means everything, bro. Tonight means everything to both of these women. All four of these women. Tony Storm looks absolutely fantastic. She is ready for tonight if she ever was. Taking a look back now at her quarterfinal victory over Mia Yim after she hit that Storm Zero. Tony Storm definitely made her presence felt against every single person she has been placed across the ring against and she's hoping to do that again right now as the final boss of Japan makes her way to the ring. The toughest, most hard-hitting woman in this tournament this year, maybe ever. Many people are expecting Mako Satomura, including myself, to win this matchup so that she can go face Io Shirai, although Io still has a mountain of her own to climb later on tonight as she takes on another fantastic standout from the Australian coast, Rhea Ripley. This probably the truest thing he's ever said. This is going to be a very hard hitting matchup between these two women. Now here's a first time ever that they should be hyping up. The fact that it took them all this time to make mention of the fact this is the first time ever Tony Storm's ever been in the same ring with Mako Satomura is a disservice to both of them. Handshake, we're showing some respect to start this match off. I'm ready, I'm excited, let's get this going. There is the bell. Both of these women staring each other down. Tony Storm's chest is blistered red already from the previous competitions she took part in. Many of you know the Mae Young Classic was filmed over two days, so that is hangover damage from her matchup with Mia Yim, which was technically earlier in the day before this matchup. As the action finally gets started here, both girls trying to gain the advantage on the onset of this matchup. Some standing chain shoot style wrestling going on. Mako Satomura trying to get out of this submission predicament. Tony Storm with an arm lock. Nice headlock takeover. Storm almost rolls it over into a cover. Tries to do it again. One. Gets a quick one count as she got Mako Satomura's shoulders down to the mat. Right now, both of these girls in a feeling each other out, period. Tony Storm now taking the advantage, transitioning into her own side headlock. Finds herself on the mat. One close two count for Mako. These girls just wrapped around each other like two snakes just fighting over a mouse or something. They're just interlocked with each other, trying to wear each other down to the best of their ability. Mako now with a head scissors. Tony Storm escapes. Wraps her back up into the side headlock. Really laying all her weight onto the back of the neck and wrenching on the head. Mako with a nice tripping takedown to escape that maneuver. Very slow ground and pound style to start off this matchup. Mako trying to wear down Tony Storm. Nice kick to the chest, catches Tony Storm off guard. Pisses her off as Tony gets up, up off the mat with purpose. 
and with some extra gusto, gets a kick to the midsection of Mako, back into that side headlock. As these girls are just grinding each other as this match begins here. Stalemate, shoulder block into the middle of the ring between both women. Nobody moves. Storm hits the ropes for again another attempt, and nobody moves. The irresistible object meeting the immovable force here. Oh, what a boot to the face by Storm to Mako Satamora goes for a cover, gets just a one, barely. What a vicious running kick into the chest of Mako gives Tony Storm the advantage here, and she is just toying with Mako now, slapping her around with her feet. Headbutt by Tony Storm. You have to question that strategy. I never understood. Another one. Definitely looks like it's doing more damage to Storm than it is to Satsumura. Storm with a close near fall. Following up those headbutts with a pinfall. But Mako did kick out. Still slow going at the beginning of this matchup. But very, very intense. You could see the wheels turning in the heads of Tony Storm as she delivers a suplex, floats over into a cover. One, two. Tony Storm cannot be frustrated by the power and the determination of Satamora. She's going to have to really unload with some heavy duty offense, as what she's doing so far is. Minimal at best doing anything to Mako, who's now chopping away at the legs of Tony Storm with some tremendous kicking strikes, taking out the knees of the Australian superstar. Mako now holding Tony Storm by the leg, just at wrapping her up into a very, very unique, almost a seated reverse figure four leg lock. Tony Storm is not liking this. This really putting pressure onto the kneecap, trying to hyper extend the legs of Tony Storm. Tony Storm trying to fight out of it, but gets a right hand from Mako who rolls over now and turns the pressure into the opposite way and it's still just as effective storm gets to the ropes and mako has to release the hold she is now staying on top of her giving those knees just as much damage as she possibly can a grounded opponent is an opponent ripe for the picking uh-oh, Mako firing up now, sends Tony Storm into the turnbuckles, follows up with a forearm to the face. Looks to be going for a German suplex. Tony Storm getting out of it with some elbow strikes. Follows up with a couple of forearms. Sends Mako into the ropes now. Mako with a spinning heel kick to the face of Tony Storm! Mako Satamura has been on Tony Storm at every turn. No matter how Storm tries to take the advantage, Satamura just has her number. The odds almost insurmountable at this point already in this matchup for Tony Storm. Wait a minute. Backslide. One, two. Tony Storm now on the attack with a submission of her own now. Mako's got to get to the ropes. This is a vicious submission, like a toe lock. Vice of some sort. I don't know what you would call this, but it is very painful. She's got her head secured into the nestled in the nook of her arm and she's just rearing back on the neck of Mako Satamura trying to deprive her brain of oxygen all at the same time trying to bust the kneecaps of Mako Satamura in this very very impressive maneuver by Tony Storm who has brought this match to a halt with Mako Satamura 
inches away from the ropes, looking for any type of release to get out of this pressure that this hold is applying to her. Tony Storm still rearing back. Mako literally inches away from the rope. She only has to reach out and she can get it. Storm trying to choke her out. Very UFC feel to this fight right now. Mako makes it to the ropes and now has to do something to get the blood flowing back to the rest of her body. Tony Storm in the corner now, runs across the ring, the hip attack to Mako in the opposite corner, follows it up with the fisherman suplex, bridge one, two, very close. Storm's got to stay on top now if she wants to have a chance to advance to the finals of this tournament. Sends Mako Satomura to the outside with a stiff kick. Tony Storm looking to do something very crazy right here. Hits the ropes. Suicide dive through the second and third ropes. Looks like she busted her arm on that steel ramp. Tony Storm taking some damage herself trying to silence and get rid of the final boss. Wow. She's definitely feeling it in that arm, trying to shake it off now as she picks up Mako Satomura to get her back into the ring. You can't get the pinfall outside the ring, that's for sure. Storm staying on the aggressive side of the equation as she hits a running knee strike to the head. Shining wizard, Tony Storm. So, so close to winning this matchup right now. Looks like that elbow's still bothering her. She might be savoring it. Got the great marks from the, from the steel floor. <laughs> Both of these girls already physically spent. Both of these women are battered. They're bruised. As Renee Young is just trying to tell you what I'm trying to say. What is happening here? Tony Storm firing off right kicks to the face with no effect to Mako who fires back. We're having a kick party right now. Both of these girls trading shots. Neither one of them feeling the effects as the adrenaline has got them both going. Vicious DDT! Mako Satomura, oh! Handspring kick to the back of the neck of Tony Storm and Mako Satomura has taken the advantage now. She has got Tony Storm up with a Death Valley driver. One, two, oh! Tony Storm kicks out. How did she have enough to kick out of that devastating Death Valley driver? An unbelievable matchup is befalling our eyes right now. Take your evolution and stick it up your ass. This is an evolution of women's wrestling. Mako, oh, what a German by Tony Storm. Snap German, setting her up for the Storm Zero. One, two, oh. Oh my god! Oh my god! Tony Storm, in as much of a shock as I am, that Mako Satamura kicked out of the Storm Zero. Unbelievable matchup happening right now in the semifinals. Neither one of these ladies leaving anything behind as they are giving their all in this matchup. Tony Storm, the first to her feet now. Going for it again. Doesn't have enough to get it off. Mako with a Pele kick. Looks like she almost broke her own neck. Oh, 
what a roundhouse kick! One, two, oh! That was the closest two count I think I might have ever seen! Oh, Scorpion rising! Good night, Tony Storm! No! <laughs> What am I watching? Women's wrestling. Women's wrestling at its finest. This is how you do it, ladies. Mako Satamora goes for that. Oh, another Storm Zero. That's got to be an unbelievable miracle. Has occurred. Tony Storm, talk about ready player one. Tony Storm had her quarter up next. She played this game and she took down the final boss. Tony Storm is as old as Mako Satamura's wrestling career. Talk about a shock. If you, I don't know if you want to call it an upset because Tony Storm is great. And she just proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt tonight. This match was incredible. Very hard hitting. It was very hard to keep up with. Some of the stuff was coming at us in such rapid fire successions. It took th two Storm Zeros to defeat Mako Satamura. Definitely impressed with this semifinal matchup. My God, what a kick that was. I thought it was over right there. Tony Storm absorbed that Scorpion rising axe kick and did not stay down. Oh my God. How can you give me this during the Mae Young Classic and then book a ridiculous battle royal for half of the most talented women you have on your roster? I can't believe we are saying goodbye. Mako Satomura was brought into the Mae Young Classic to put over Tony Storm. And I'm all right with it. Thank you, Mako. Wow. Tony Storm, very emotional now in the middle of the ring. Both of these ladies down on their knees. Tony Storm is just crying. Mako Satomura is crying. A show of respect as they bow to each other in the ring as they now hug. Congratulations to both of you. Unbelievable matchup. That is a history making moment. Probably a, a dream. She probably feels like she's in a dream right now, Tony Storm. Kyrie Sane is in the ring. She's here to give the flowers to Tony Storm as she is the first of our two entrants into the finals. Tony Storm on her way to Evolution, definitely going to steal the show. Triple H out at the entrance ramp saying goodbye to Mako. Showing some respect. Triple H, proud dad H with his extra long beard still at this point. <laughs> you know, if this is the last time we ever see Mako Satomura in the WWE, it would be very sad. But it will also be in one of the best women's matchups the WWE has had all year long. 
very intense, very dramatic, very unpredictable. Let's see what Tony Storm has to say here. To standing right here as the finalist of this year's tournament, going to the all-women first-ever pay-per-view evolution for the May Young Classic Finals. What Who is, is this chick? Right now? Who are you, blonde lady? I know who Tony Storm is, the interview guy, uh, lady. Who is this new robot they just built from the back? This is a great moment for her. She deserves every minute. As if I just beat Mako Satamora, a legend. I can now stand in this ring and say that I am absolutely well and truly living my dream. Tony Storm has got bruises all over her body. Her elbow is fucked up. She's got a big gash on the side of her face. Like I said, before this match even got started, her chest was all scarred up. And now she's got some more battle scars to add to that collection after this matchup with Mako Satomura. As she's headed towards Evolution... Really, all bets are off now for this next matchup. You want to just automatically believe Io Shirai is going to win, but there is the possibility that the new and improved Rhea Ripley might have a little bit more than what it takes to take out the genius of the sky. Tony Storm and Triple H up at the rampway now. Aw, oh, proud Papa. Papa H with his first finalist. Awesome. Congratulations to Tony Storm. I, I really thought she should have made it all the way to the finals last year. But they had an agenda with Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane, and that went down in classic style. So they obviously knew what they were doing. Absolutely fantastic match. I am really in a shock. I thought for sure we were getting Mako Satsumura versus Io Shirai as the finals of this tournament. Do you know what it means for Tony Storm to be the one to knock out Mako? I think you do. I know Kyle knows. Right, Kyle? Wow. All right, guys. We have got one match left to go. Before we have to wrap everything up at Evolution with the finals. And it is going to be Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. I want to win. And show the world what a great wrestler I am. Says Io. I'll be your translator for this evening. I want to make it to the finals and win the tournament. Who doesn't, EO? I want to make it to the finals and win. Rhea Ripley needs no translation. She looks amazing. A tear is underselling it. Rhea Ripley has been on a path of destruction. Never mind a tear. She easily defeated MJ Jenkins. She took out... She took out... Oh, see, I forget her name. Tegan Knox. That's how underwhelming she was. She took her out without barely even doing anything to her. Rhea Ripley is frightening. Rhea Shirai, I'm going to rip her apart. 
She's going to rip her apart. That's what she said. You see what I'm saying? This girl is sick. She's next level. Rhea Ripley is next level. Io Shirai is next level on a whole nother different scale. My God. Even the crowd knows how crazy what they just witnessed was and are ready for this last matchup in this tournament. Introducing first, Rhea Ripley. My opinion, the most improved superstar from last year to this year overall. I know I said that also about Zia Lee, and that's just in a performance standpoint when I was referencing her, but as a complete and total package, Rhea Ripley is somebody that you could build a women's division around. She has got the quintessential heel sneer down, absolutely down. Her outfit is perfect. Her style is perfect. I don't even care whether she's intentionally ripping off Pete Dunne or not. It works, and I love it. I can't wait to see what she is going to do after the Mae Young Classic. She should be at the top of somebody's women's division. That's for shit sure. Just like Io Shirai, you could say all the same things about Io Shirai as she makes her way towards the ring in her Five Nights as Freddy's sparkly, glowy mask. <laughs> the teddy bear tail mask, which is frightening, if you ask me. Some chick comes in the room dressed like that, right? You're going to be uh, thinking twice before you decide to tango with somebody that looks the way Io Shirai looks when she's walking out to this ring. Which means the intimidation factor is working, I guess. Is it not? <laughs> we're having fun, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to have some fun here. As we are very tense ourselves. I'm very nervous about this matchup. As you can see, I'm starting to amp up myself a little bit. Very anxious to get this all wrapped up and ready to go as we're getting set for this weekend here ourselves. All right, here we go. Io Shirai extending the hand. Rhea Ripley smacks it away as I expected her to do. We ain't here to shake hands, Io. We're here to break hands. There's the bell as the girls circle each other in the ring to get the final match before Evolution underway. Rhea Ripley showing her power, sending Io Shirai barreling into the corner with the greatest of ease. Shirai looks a little bit worried now as they tie up again only to find herself back on the mat. Shirai needs to use that speed. Looks like that's what she's going to do. Handspring, double backflip. Catches Rhea Ripley off guard on the attack. But Ripley just tosses her up in the air. Very, very sloppily. Io Shirai crash and burning on that landing there. Rhea Ripley staying on the attack now. Some hammering shots to the back of EO. This landing was brutal. Oh, my. Oh. Ripley now stomping on the back of EO. I don't think Rhea Ripley feels for one minute that she is going to have any problem doing away with Io Shirai as she finds herself once again in a very dominating position. Armbar applied to Io. Io is trying to kick Rhea Ripley in the head enough times to have her let it go. Rhea Ripley does release the hold, really kind of annoyed at Io and strikes her in the back again with the point of her foot. 
continuing to stomp away. Io Shirai is in big trouble if she don't start pulling some maneuvers out of her back pocket and doing something as Rhea Ripley's just standing on her back and pulling out a shoot pose right now. Goes for the cover. One, two. Not impressed thus far is Rhea Ripley, nor am I. This match has been a little awkward thus far. Rhea Ripley now applied with a kneeling abdominal stretch and at the same time she's just ripping with just cinching her grip right into the kidney area of Io Shirai. Io is screaming in pain. She has got to do something to get out of this predicament. Shirai now looks like she's hulking up. She's got to throw it. There it is. She's balling up her fist, but just not throwing it until now. Three big shots. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a right by Rhea Ripley as she follows up with some stiff forearms as Io Shirai has just been down for this whole entire match. Rhea Ripley using her dominating power to just quench any offense coming her way from Io Shirai. She can't be the queen of the sky if she can't get off the mat. And Rhea Ripley has got a leg vice wrapped around the midsection, just sucking the air right out, making it hard for Io to breathe, continuing the assault on the midsection. Io tries to get out of it by rolling into a cover, but the power of Ripley once again to easily put her back into position. Ripley just squeezing those legs like a python. Shirai unable to free herself from that vice-like grip. She rolls back into a cover again, forces Ripley to release the hold. Oh my God, the brutality of Rhea Ripley is just ridiculous. A devastating drop kick. Puts Io Shirai down on the floor again. We have not seen Io on her feet at all within the first five minutes of this match as it's going on. Just toying with Shirai now, pulling her around the ring by her hair. Ripley setting her up for a suplex, puts her up vertically. Doesn't look like she's going to be letting her down anytime soon. Letting all that blood rush to the head of Io Shirai. Finally dropping her down. What a stalling suplex that was. A very close two count for Rhea Ripley once again. Goes again for a cover but only gets a two count. The small of the back on Io Shirai is red. As red as Tony Storm's chest was. As now Rhea Ripley goes back to that vice leg grip around the abdomen of Io Shirai. Getting a little bored, am I? If I'm being honest. Ripley seated on top of Shirai now and is just sandbagging her at the back of the head, mushing her. We are effectively right now watching Rhea Ripley just sitting in the ring and Io Shirai doing some incredible acting to try to make us believe this vice grip around her freaking midsection. This, I am tired of saying the same thing. I've been watching the same thing for five minutes, so I keep telling you guys she's got this vice-like grip on her midsection. They need to do something else at this point. They're losing my interest. Io Shirai now finally getting some offense in. Turns out of it and is just barreling forearms into the face of the big mean Ripley. Oh my god. Io finally creating some separation between them. But both ladies are down on the mat on their back. Rhea's been punishing Io's midsection for the better part of this match. 
Is she gonna be able to shake it off enough to get to your feet? Io Shirai needs to summon the power of the Queen Xenomorph if she wants to take out this Ripley. Oh, they heard that shot all the way back in Japan. What a kick to the back of Shirai by the devastatingly powerful Rhea Ripley. Sends Shirai into the ropes, puts her up, look out, Urukun Rana rolls her up, one, two. Almost a surprise victory. Shirai staying on the attack, stalling dropkick of her own. Rhea Ripley rolling to the outside, very smart maneuver. You can't win the match outside the ring. Trying to get herself together after a flurry of blows from Io Shirai, who's screaming like a maniac in the ring, which could only mean one thing. With Rhea Ripley on the outside, Shirai hits the rope. She's going for it. Suicide dive once again. That same dive we have seen in every matchup, at least this time. She didn't look like she almost killed herself. So very well done. Beautifully executed by Io Shirai. Ripley almost caught her absolutely perfectly. You got to believe that the power of Ripley comes into play when pulling off a spot like that. We are at the count of six. Ripley pulls Io Shirai back out. Runs back into the ring. Starts the count again. I don't understand that. Io Shirai never made it back into the ring. She should still kind of be at a seven count. Only Rhea Ripley made it back into the ring officially. Back at a count of six once again. Seven. Eight. Nine, and like a cat, Io Shirai springs back to life and into the ring. Ripley is furious. Immediately mounts Io on her back and just delivers another flurry of forearms. Rhea Ripley looks very angry now as she thought she had this match won via countout just a few seconds ago. She's pulling Io up onto her feet trash talking Io Shirai now slaps the taste right out of her mouth and then a ridiculous right Io Shirai looked like she was dead just now wait a minute reverses out of a suplex hits with a palm strike uppercut Ripley felt no effect both of these girls are just screaming at each other Ripley finally stunned, draped across a second rope. 619 by Shirai. Eo's going up to the top now. Ripley stunned in the middle of the ring. Missile drop kick from the top. Rhea Ripley collapses like a ton of bricks. One, two. Close two count for Eo Shirai there. This match definitely started to pick up the pace. Uh-oh. Here we go. She has Ripley set up. She looks like she's going for the springing moonsault, but Ripley is up. We've seen the same spot now in every match for Io. She goes up and gets knocked off by her opponent. Rhea Ripley now on the attack, trying to set up Io Shirai on the top turnbuckle. Looks like she's going to set her up for a suplex. Superplex, she's going up to the tippy top. Ripley going for a superplex. And oh, executes beautifully. Gotta get that pin, Ripley's gotta get on top of it. There it is, one, two. Io Shirai still in this thing.
Looks like the superplex from the top rope did just as much damage to Ripley as it did to Io Shirai. Ripley showing the effects as she's clutching at her own back now, trying to stay on top of Io, looking like she's going to try to finish her off with that pump handle slam. Io Shirai powers out of it, sends Ripley into the ring post, shoulder first. Wow. Io Shirai pulling herself together in the corner. Ripley in the opposite corner. Shirai, Meteora double knee strike. Looks like she's setting her up now. Stomps on Ripley. Bounces from the third to the top rope. Moonsault and actually kind of hits it the best she's ever hit it for the three count. And the finals are set. And it's going to be a good one. We are now on a collision course. Tony Storm going to take on the Queen of the Sky, Io Shirai, at WWE Evolution. You can guarantee that that match will be better than everything else on the card, possibly even Shayna Baszler versus Kyrie Sane. If there is any match on the Evolution card that could come close to what these two girls can pull off, it will be that one for the NXT Women's Championship. Notice the commonality being NXT. You know what I mean? Rhea Ripley going to be in NXT UK. Io Shirai signed to NXT. Triple H knows what he's doing with the Mae Young Classic. This is women's wrestling. This is is a woman's evolution. This is the kind of stuff we should be seeing on Raw and SmackDown and every other program that the WWE wants to put out there. We shouldn't be getting this bullshit pay-per-view the way that it is being formulated and presented to us this Saturday, but that's another story for this weekend's preview and predictions, which I don't even really want to do for Crap Solution this Sunday. Io Shirai with a hard-fought win against Rhea Ripley, a comeback win against Rhea Ripley as Ripley seemingly had Io Shirai's number for the majority of this matchup. But that's what Io does. The first half of the match was pretty boring, if I'm being honest, but it, the end was, was very cool. It picked up. The first match was the better of the two, I think. A lot of these girls took it to the limit in all of the matches. Oh, Papa H is back. He's congratulating Rhea Ripley at the top of the ramp. Don't worry, Ripley. Your day will come, sweetheart. And Io Shirai. About to make history. Not because of evolution, but because she is going to be... Oh, look at this now. Kyrie Sane bringing the flowers to Io Shirai, and they are, like, really hugging it out. These are two very, very good friends. They have a very close personal relationship, I'm, I'm assuming. Michael Cole says they're best friends, but we can never really believe what Michael Cole says now, can we? So who knows? But you can tell just in their interactions with each other, very genuine emotion. Kyrie Sane paved the way that Io Shirai is trying to sail down herself. I don't know what they're saying to each other. Oh, and now this new blonde bot, 4000, is going to interview Io Shirai. Let's see what Io has to say. How do you feel in this moment? Yeah, thank you so much, everything! Yeah! <laughs> I will win! I will number one! Thank you so much! <laughs> She's adorable. Ladies and gentlemen, your She's 2018 Absolutely Mayo adorable. Tournament finalist, Eero Shirai! 
Eero, Eero, Blonde Bot is malfunctioning. Somebody needs to take her in for maintenance. It's her first night on the job. She needs a fucking tune-up. Eero, that's worse than anything I've ever called her. <laughs> Eero, Shirai. Are you kidding me? That was even worse than Cole. Holy cow. Wow, Beth Phoenix is picking Tony Storm to win this thing. I think I might pick Tony Storm as well. I, it's nothing against Io Shirai. I have been impressed with her throughout the entirety of this tournament, even though she's a moonsault missing machine. But I think I'm going to go with Tony Storm. Michael Cole's going with Tony Storm. Of course he is. He's probably racist. No, I'm just I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I don't mean that. I'm just playing. Michael Cole's not racist. I'm sure he doesn't hate Asian people. He's just got to pick probably the girl he wants to bang the most. He's probably attracted to her and wants to get in Tony Storm's pants. Knows that he can't, so he's going to pick her to win the May Young Classic this year. I don't know why I'm even talking about any of this. I'm absolutely exhausting myself. Hey, there's Papa H. Now we can finish this thing. Big Daddy H. Papa Helmsley. Now on the ramp with everybody. Kyrie Sane's just having a ball. We got Tony Storm coming to the stage as the finals are set. These two are hugging it out. Tony Storm and Io Shirai are about to go to war this Sunday. The Australian Storm can come up with anything better than that. <laughs> Who will make history? They all already made history just by doing what they did tonight. And that's it, you guys. That was the final episode of the May Young Classic. I fully enjoyed this tournament this year, probably more so than I enjoyed last year's tournament, but it is technically not over yet, as Sunday is going to be here before you know it, and hopefully they get this match over quickly. And I don't mean it that way. I wanted to, to start the show, maybe, so that we can watch the Mae Young Classic Finals, and then we can watch the NXT Women's Championship, and then I can go about my business on Sunday because I don't need to watch anything else. So let's hope that could be the best-case scenario. <laughs> Thank you guys, as always, for joining me with this live reaction show. Obviously, we're not going to be back doing the Mae Young Classic next week because it's over now. The show is over, so we're going to have to replace it with something. Maybe we will start doing the regular NXT on a Wednesday weekly basis. We have been having a ball doing NXT UK, and I hope you guys have been enjoying watching that. It's absolutely worth your time, even with the pauses in the action and, and me not talking over the whole entire show. I have so much fun calling the main events of both of these shows. You have got to, if you watch nothing else, watch me call the Pete Dunne versus Noam Dar match and then watch Tyler Bate versus Wolfgang from last night because I just, I had a great time and I think you guys would enjoy everything I brought to the table. If you can hear it, my voice is fucked. This is something you guys are going to have to get used to by the time we get to the end of the week when I'm doing so many things. We did the subscription box showdown today. We did NXT UK, and now we're doing this. So that's a whole lot of recording. That's a whole lot of yelling and screaming. So my voice is a little bit less than usual as we are about to wrap up this episode, and I'll let you guys go catch your sleep, catch your Z's, whatever it is you want to catch. Maybe you want to go out and catch some Bluefin. Maybe you want to catch the latest episode of The Purge, which is something I still need to do and catch up on that. Whatever it is you need to catch up on, I'm going to let you go do that right now. Thank you guys again for joining me on this May Young Classic Review. You obviously had a great time. If you're still here with me, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Get us to 1,000 subscribers before the end of this year, and then let's blow that fucking number out of the water and get to 10,000 as quick as possible, and then eclipse that and go to 100,000 because we are the greatest wrestling channel on all of YouTube. We have the best wrestling fans that any wrestling community has anywhere. 
anywhere. The smartest, funniest, most knowledgeable, and respectful wrestling fans you will ever find anywhere. Right down there in the comment section down below. I love each and every one of you. Make sure you smash that like button, especially if you had fun watching me call these matches today. And then share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they've been loving the Mae Young Classic and they need to hear some decent commentary and not what Michael Cole's been doing every week, ruining the Mae Young Classic. My name, ladies and gentlemen, is Nick Nightmare. This is my team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the wrestling god of thunder and the official sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. And his partner, the world heavyweight champion, of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue. He didn't lose his head. He didn't lose his head on this show. He lost his head on the UK Review. That show was so good, that Blue's head came completely off his body. I couldn't even believe it was happening. But we repaired him, and we got him back in the ring and ready to go for the rest of that review, just like we got him ready to go for you guys here tonight. So if you missed that, there's another reason to go watch the NXT UK reaction show thank you guys once again that is going to do it we are out of here and we will see you this weekend for all the evolution nonsense we have to do and i hope you guys come and join in on it with me because i can't do it alone and i look to you to be by my side that my friends is going to do it and we are out of here <laughs> and we will see you next time right here on the sledge hammer Wrestling show. That's the second time I botched the ending. That's twice, man. NXT. Is <laughs>